Climate change lie number three exposed. Global warming causes extreme weather. Claim. Global warming causes extreme weather. The claim is that global warming is bad because it causes extreme weather. If that were true, then I might agree with the earlier claim that global warming is bad. As we saw in the first video of this series, we now know that our counterclaim is far more likely that global warming reduces extreme weather in the long run. Here we're talking about hurricanes, typhoons, and tornadoes. That's a lot of strong wind. In this video, I attempt to show that global warming will ultimately eliminate most, if not all, strong winds. Fact. Wind is caused by temperature differences. The stronger the difference, the stronger the wind. Have you ever been to a mall on a hot day? As you're about to enter, have you ever noticed the coolness around your ankles? The cooler air is heavier and pours out of the building close to the ground. If you could see temperature, you'd likely see the cooler air flowing like a river into the hot outdoors. Have you ever seen a hot air balloon? Hot air rises. That's why smoke and fire rises into the sky. It's the temperature difference that creates movement. Without that difference, air has no reason to move. Corollary claim, but science says it's a pressure difference that causes wind to blow. Every day on the weather report, they always talk about high pressure and low pressure areas, and these are what cause wind to blow. Fact, pressure differences in the atmosphere are caused by temperature differences. Where do pressure differences come from? Does the sun send out beams of pressure to the earth? No. There's no such thing. Hot air expands and less constrained. When it is enclosed, it increases in pressure. Cool air contracts or creates lower pressure. So it all comes back to temperature differences. The sun supplies energy in the form of light, and that's where we get the heat. Earth has many things that create coolness. Clouds and the daily rotation of night and day are two of them. Corollary claim. Hurricanes passing over warmer tropical waters pick up more energy. Scientists have shown that hurricanes increase in size and wind velocity when they pass over warm tropical waters. Global warming makes the oceans warmer, so the threat will only increase. That's the notion believed by some warming alarmists. And of course, when the oceans get warmer, that causes stronger storms. We have seen uh, in the last couple of years a lot of big hurricanes. Hurricane Jeannie and Francis and Ivan uh, were among them. And then, of course, came Katrina. It's worth remembering that when it hit Florida, it was a Category 1. But it killed a lot of people and caused billions of dollars worth of damage. And then what happened? Before it hit New Orleans, it went over warmer waters. As the water temperature increases, the wind velocity increases, and the moisture content increases. And you'll see Hurricane Katrina form over Florida, and then as it comes into the Gulf over that warm water, it picks up that energy and gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Look at that hurricane's eye. Discussion. Agree, but. I completely agree with the idea that storms moving over warm waters will pick up energy. But even as Al Gore presented this idea in his infamous film, An Inconvenient Truth, he was misleading the public with it. Within a storm, like a hurricane, the temperature is normally on the cool side. When all that cool air passes over warmer waters, you have a perfect recipe for creating stronger wind. And this is exactly the point I'm making. Wind does not blow unless there is a temperature difference. It's the difference that matters. A warmer planet will end up reducing the temperature differences, eliminating strong storms altogether. Fact. Heat by itself does not create wind. You could have great heat everywhere but zero wind. 
air will have no reason to blow and will have no direction to blow without a temperature difference. Fact. Hot Venus has very little surface wind. On the surface of Venus, there is plenty of heat, but almost no wind. Estimates are that the wind there blows at a calm 10 kilometers per hour, if it blows at all. Million-year-old craters on the surface of Venus remain in pristine condition, indicating that wind erosion is virtually non-existent. With all the surface debris from meteor collisions, there should be plenty of small particles to create sand-like erosion. But the wind hardly blows because the temperature at the surface is virtually the same everywhere. Noon, midnight, equator, and pole. The slight differences in temperature of only a few degrees create some wind, but we would barely notice wind like that on Earth. Venus has plenty of wind in the upper atmosphere, but that's because of the huge differences in temperature between the night and the day sides of the planet at that altitude. The surface heat remains constant everywhere on Venus, despite the very slow rotation of the planet, and Venus has 219,000 times as much CO2 in its atmosphere as does Earth. Even though CO2 is a weak greenhouse gas, as we showed in the last video, Venus has so much of the gas that it remains overwhelming. Comparing Earth's CO2 to that of Venus is like comparing a firecracker to a nuclear bomb. Fact. Cold Jupiter has lots of wind. Jupiter, on the other hand, has huge temperature differences within its cloudy atmosphere. It is constantly in a state of storminess. Some of its hurricanes are larger than our entire planet, and Jupiter is extremely cold. Winds are generated from the differences between extreme cold and merely frigid temperatures. Again, it's the temperature differences that drive the winds in the Jovian atmosphere. Fact. Warming will lead to calmer weather. Textbooks on climate science tell their first-year students all about this. Dr. Richard Lindzen of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, has strong words about the global warming fraternity. Every textbook in meteorology is telling you the main source of weather disturbances is the temperature difference between the tropics and the pole. And we're told, in a warmer world, this difference will get less. Now that would tell you, you'll have less storminess, you'll have less variability. But for some reason, that isn't considered catastrophic. So you're told the opposite. The founder and first director of the Climate Research Unit at East Anglia University, Dr. Hubert Lamb, held a fascination with the medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age. His research on Little Ice Age storminess provides strong evidence to support our counterclaim. Far more violent storms occurred during the Little Ice Age than we've experienced in the 20th and 21st centuries. The reason is easy to understand. During the Little Ice Age, polar cold moved closer to equatorial heat, jacking up the temperature gradient. For example, this led to the violent storm of 1588 that saved the British from Spanish conquest. It also racked the English coastline in 1703 with what was perhaps the single most violent storm to slam into England in that nation's history. Modern Great Britain is not known for its hurricanes. But during the Little Ice Age, both England and continental Europe received far greater numbers of violent storms than today. Fact. The number of strong tornadoes in America has declined for 60 years. This chart from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, shows the trend for strong tornadoes over the last 60 years. Notice the strong downward trend. Corollary claim. But Al Gore said there were a record number of tornadoes in 2004. And the same year that we had that string of big hurricanes, we also set an all-time record for tornadoes in the United States. I don't know where Gore got his figures, 
but NOAA's chart on tornadoes for 2004 shows only 600, not 1,717, in the range of EF1 and stronger. For EF3 and stronger, there were only 28 that year, so his figures must include tornadoes weaker than EF1. With better technology, more people with cell phones, and bigger populations spread over the land, we may have larger numbers of weak tornadoes simply because people were there to record them. We didn't have that in the 20th century. Fact. The global hurricane count has also declined. Though global hurricane counts have declined for the last 46 years, the number of strong hurricanes have increased slightly, as expected. We really need to get rid of the ice, the major source on this planet for temperature differences and strong storms. Fact. Thermohaline circulation keeps northern Europe warm. The bottom of the ocean naturally contains the most dense water. On either side of this cold temperature of 4 degrees Celsius, water expands. As ice, the density of frozen water is slight enough so that it floats no matter how warm the water gets. Water in the ocean moves like a river. The Gulf Stream is one of those rivers, and the Gulf Stream carries warm tropical waters up north, keeping northern Europe warm enough to be habitable for large populations. If this circulation were to shut down while we're still in an ice age, temperatures in northern Europe would plummet, leading to glaciation, permanent ice coverage. The first time the Holocene started, the massive rapid warming melted so much ice that much of the cold, fresh water built up behind an ice wall, forming ancient Lake Agassiz in Canada. When the ice wall broke, all that cold, fresh water emptied into the Atlantic shutting down the thermohaline circulation and plunging the world back into another 1,300 years of glacial period climate called the Younger Dryas. Of course, the tropics didn't change much. They never do. But the polar cold continued to reign over the mid and upper latitudes. When something finally broke the freshwater cap on the thermohaline circulation about 9620 B.C., the warming trend suddenly resumed with the second start of the Holocene interglacial. That included a rate of warming of 10 degrees Celsius in 10 years, or rated per century, 100 degrees Celsius per 100 years. I call this the Atlantis event. Something big stirred up the Atlantic enough to jumpstart the thermohaline circulation and to restore warmth to northern Europe. London in southern England is roughly equivalent to the frigid northern tip of Newfoundland, Canada, where Viking ruins have been found. Stockholm is near the same latitude of Yellowknife, Canada, but while the capital of Sweden has a robust metropolitan population of over a million and a half, Yellowknife has only a little over 19,000 people, and it's one of the largest towns for hundreds of miles. Conclusion Global warming ultimately calms down the weather. Even though global warming may result in stronger storms in the short term, warming up all that ice at the poles and ending the current ice age once and for all will end up creating a far more peaceful Earth. 